welcome to all members of the Charter Ends of Taxation of Nigeria across Nigeria and around the world. Um, we also say a well welcome to all our other viewers um, who are non members of CITN but who have joined us on this program. This program is titled CITN Taxation and You. It is the maiden edition of um, a platform, a program, a process where the Chartered Institute of Taxation of Nigeria um, attempts to address um, national, global, fiscal and topical issues as the impact on Nigeria as a country and um, individuals, taxpayers, institutions around Nigeria and also those, those who have um, transactional dealings with Nigeria in one form or the other. I have a special guest here with me um, to discuss it's very topical issue, something we are trying to look for a way to try to deal with uh, or resolve in Nigeria. This issue has been reoccurring. So the title of this maiden edition is titled Proactive Public Funding for Tertiary Education Development. Proactive Public Funding for Tertiary Education Development. The guest I have here started his working career with the Office of the Auditor General of the Federation from 1984 to 1993. From there, moved on to the firm of Adetan Asichi and Co. That was the firm of Chartered Accountant between the year 1993 to 1999. Then a, mem a merger with Akita Deloitte. Um, he worked with AWD, that is Akita Deloitte, um, from, 19, from 1999 to 2002, uh, when he went forward to found this firm, another company, one of the firm is Addition Ade Dayanko, that's the firm of Chitra Accountant, and um, AIA Professional Services. These were founded in 2022. In 2012, um, we founded Wise Limited. This is an asset management and investment holding company that in 2012 till date. He attended Samuel Grand School, Lagos, and also has a BS in accounting from National State University, that's in Kefi, National State. He has also attended the National Institute of um, Policy and Strate Strategic um, Study, JOS, um, by Kuri in JOS. So, uh, official is an MNI. And um, very importantly, he is the 15th president of the Chartered Institute of Taxation of Nigeria. He is also a fellow of the Institute of Chartered Account of Nigeria. Um, let's make a welcome for Mr. Adeshina Dedaya. Mr. Adeshina Dedaya, welcome to our program. Thank you very much, OJ. I'm yeah. happy to be here. Yeah, thank and you so morning, much. Colleagues. Yeah, so colleagues, our president is greeting you um, from where we are. Uh, we know a lot of you are on Zoom, and um, a whole lot, um, or maybe um, not putting on your video, but you can hear us. So he's saying a, a very, um, you know, great good morning to every one of us. So as I said before, Mr. President, while we are here, um, the essence of this program is to deal with topical issue, um, but not to make it as a talk show. The purpose is for us to harness our thoughts, our views, our commentaries, and probably get feedback from our members who are online in Nigeria and around the world, and even non CITM members, because we believe that the topic we have today and um, the series of programs which I'll be dealing with are a very serious issue that every single Nigerian, every well wisher of this country, will need to make an input towards having a lasting solution. So, the topic for this maiden edition of CITM Taxation on You is a um, Proactive public funding of tertiary education development. Proactive public funding. Now, the institute has come up with this topic because um, we have, um, our lecturers are talking about those under the ages of um, academic staff union of University ASU. Um, you know, I've been on strike. This strike started on February 14. After a warning, after a warning strike and all of that, um, we decided in November 2021. But the strike took off in February. February 14, 2022. So by our counting, today is August 4. So by August 14, we'll be talking about complete six months where there is no regular academic intellection in our ivory towers across the length and breadth of Nigeria in public universities. Public university. Now this problem, this problem is one too many, and it has been reoccurring. This is not the first time. You know, one year after the other, the nation has been struggling with one form of strikes or the other. Um, and um, one of the frequent strikes is that of the academic staff union of university. Same thing for ASUP, 
academics coming out of polytechnics, but you know, sometimes they interchange, sometimes one is functional. But if you look at it, the problem, the demand has always been on funding. And that tells us that if the strike has been recurring over and over again, that means whichever structure we have in place, whichever model we have in place, is not working. End of discussion. It's not working. Because even when we have the place is working, there will not be need for any strike, and there will not be tendency for repeti repetitive use of strike to try to drive home funding demands. Right? So that is all we say. The institute is looking at them. Um, can that be proactive? Can we be proactive towards trying to come up with a model that can deal with the issue of funding for our public universities, public polytechnics, public college of education, and other specialized public institutions? We, are, we only mention University of Poland because um, they produce the graduates um, that will mobilize the NYC, right? So there are other you know, special purpose institutions that have gone through one form of funding challenge or the other. And for the statistics, according to the LEC website, we had a total of 103 public universities, a total of 103 public licensed, 103 public universities licensed. Maybe one or two may not have taken off operationally, but that is the total of publicly licensed universities. For the records too, we have 92, 92 public polytechnics. When we say public, we mean those owned by either the federal government or the state government. And for the other statistics, private polytechnics in Nigeria are licensed 168. Uh, so total polytechnic, we have 168. Out of the 168, the number of polytechnics are 76. For the university, the total number of private universities in Nigeria are licensed by NUC, 111. Out of this 111, um, you know, um, a few are just taking up, a few are the take-off stage. But our focus here is on public funding, proactive, like we said, what we have does not work, proactive public funding for our tertiary education development, you know, in our public school. So, my president, um, what is your take on this? Thank you very much. Let me, let me connect the dots. And in connecting the dots, let's talk about, we need to look at the past, the present, and then also have a glimpse into the future. And in talking about the past, I listened to the president of ASU, and one of the things he mentioned is the fact that a lot of the people who are creating these challenges has the benefit of going through public universities. Correct. So that means that if it is that bad, we wouldn't have created the people we are talking about who are our leaders. Now, the second part I want to take, I'm just trying to connect the dots, taking it from where we started from to where we are and where we should be. Now, the next thing again is to say, look, we are talking about all this. At what point did we really miss it? Or is it that we are not conscious of our population growth, or the population growth caught us on our ways? There is, <laughs> there is a saying we normally say in our own uh, mode. I say, look, the, a visitor of nine months is not supposed to catch you on our ways. That is, your wife got pregnant, and then all of a sudden, you are making it look as if <laughs> nine months after, you are surprised that she has delivered. That is why it's coming, after nine months. And yeah. I attended a program recently, and I made it clear. 50-something years ago, our population was around the 50-something million category. And talking 56, 57 years after, we are in the range of 200-something million. And we are growing at this level. Apart from the issue of governance challenges we have, is it that we never took it as a priority? And every time we are mounting the issue of industrial revolution, industrial revolution, and we want to be there. Now, when we are mindful of these statistics, bearing in mind that 95%, assuming without considering anyway, 95% of the population of the students we have as of today are attending public universities. If that is not the case, that means that we have neglected 95% of critical stakeholders by not addressing the challenge of public funding of universities. ASU has become what does not require anybody to go through Google to define because of the <laughs> red frequency <laughs> of, right. the, of the strike. Okay. Having mentioned this, you now ask again, what exactly are the demand of ASU? 
If ASU's demand has gotten to the level of memorandum of understanding, and now you are talking about memorandum of action, <laughs> and the action is not being taken, then we should ask ourselves some question: What went wrong? Now, attending to what you mentioned, okay, now that is the past. I'm now in the present. In the present now, you just make it clear. On Lover's Day, if I'm correct, February 14th, 40, yes, yes, where we are supposed 20, to be 20, showing love, that is where we said it's high time for us to call a strike. <laughs> okay, I didn't even connect that. <laughs> well, go ahead. <laughs> now, be that as it may, some months after, we are finding it difficult to resolve. And then when you take all the other statistics into consideration, I took my time too in the course of coming here to look at where do we start when it comes to countries that invest in education. Where do we start when it comes to our ranking education-wise? We are not in the first 78. I stopped at 78. I got tired when I got to 78. Later, I even <laughs> realized that we are about 140 something. But <laughs> okay. you okay, see, that, South okay. Africa, which is very close to us in terms of this thing, is around 34, so 34 or 35. Okay, on the ranking, right? On the ranking. And I asked myself, one of the things I learned in life is when you realize that your living room is not necessarily the best living room anybody can talk about, you check what is happening in your neighbor's living room. If there is a way he has arranged his own living room that makes it so beautiful, why don't you copy such things? Okay, okay. And we have this mindset that if you are investing in the future, you invest in the education of your children. You invest in making them, because when your children come into this world, I'm connecting the dots in order to address the question. And when your children come into this world, they don't know how to say anything, even, the, the, even how to call you daddy or mommy. They are ignorant of that. So when we are saying we are battling against spirit and principalities, no, we are actually battling against ignorance and poverty. Okay, okay, and girls are poverty. That is what we are battling against okay, let's as a on. country. Now, if that is not what we are battling against, and we talk about public funding, for us to address public funding, looking at the, where we are today, we should start looking at what are those things we have in place already. Okay. We have the third fund of this world. We have all these other things. They are... Yeah, we have the annual allocation. You know, budget allocation, the allocation. Yes, yes. It takes me to the next one short, medium, long-term funding, including scenario planning, and including case scenario planning, best case, worst case, and uh, ideal case. If that is not the case, you take it. We are looking, I want to believe, that is my assumption anyway, without looking at the figures critically, with about two trillion naira, the problem of ASU is technically addressed. Yeah, actually, yeah, you're right, Mr. President. You know, in the MOU um, signed with the previous administration, inherited by this regime, um, we're talking about 1.3 trillion naira. Out of the 1.3, um, the Minister of Labor said government had give, paid some like about 92 billion naira. Those are his words. You know, so we um, we do not know whether that is the actual fact from side of us. So two billion. Now leaving that one point three, bringing it down to about one point one trillion. So uh, I'm just um, you know supporting the fact that um, two point one trillion is going to clear it, right? Yeah. So you may proceed, sir. Yeah. I, in fact, the one point three trillion is the intervention part. There is the other aspect again that borders on the um, uh, the area that has to do with outstanding and uh, overtime allowances and so many other things. But that's why I'm actually grossing it up. Okay. I said with two trillion, we okay. would have cleared this. And this is the future of the country. We are battling so many other things. We are battling issues of, we are talking about paying 5,000 naira to address poverty. Poverty is safe. Let's put it in context, and I will go to the subject matter. Poverty is safe. It's an affliction of the mind. And ignorance is absence of knowledge. OK, OK. And then the knowledge, the educational part of the issue again has to do with the development of the mind. So when you connect these two, you will see the mind mind thing re repeating itself. Meaning that education is foundational. Is the foundational to, you know, to, to curing all of this. And the poverty we are talking about. Okay, okay. If you are not addressing the educational part of it, how do you start curing ignorance? And I use one simple illustration. I'm, I will go to the, because that aspect of what we are discussing today is the meat of issue. So what I'm doing is just more or less a preamble. 
And I use a simple analysis. You sent your child to school as a parent. You asked him to go and read medicine. You were young, dynamic, vibrant, making a lot of money. You sent your first child to go and read medicine. He read medicine, became a medical doctor. And then you grow old. When you grow old, after 70 years, what you are doing with your body is a lot of maintenance. Because you have used the body for 70 years. So you are talking about maintenance, maintenance, maintenance. Yeah, okay. At the point yeah. where you are ready to be talking about maintenance, and you need the lives of your son or daughter in the medical hospital in Nigeria, they are nowhere to be found. What happened? After they become medical doctors, it is clear the country is not giving them the type of enabling environment they want to operate. Then you see a UK offering them scholarship and giving them opportunity. And they now travel outside of the country to go and add to their knowledge with effective medical technologies in place. And what happened thereafter? They are taking care of the old people outside of this country. And the old people at home have been neglected, looking for a go. Now, you, can you equate it? It is like something is wrong with us. We have invested in such people, and they left in, their, in a more conducive environment. And they are taking care of the people over there in addition to funny policies that borders on our monetary policies and the rest. So you see that at that point, you labor, and somebody else is getting the benefit of your labor. Do you know how many people leave the country on a daily basis? Do you know how many people are saying that, look, they want to go in a place where their uh, uh, effort will be adequately rewarded? And then the foundation of our knowledge, the knowledge providers, because that is what I want us to look at these ASU people as. It yeah. should be the knowledge providers. You need to develop them. You need to give them the right infrastructure. And you need to ensure that they are motivated enough so that they will not come to the class and they are transferring their frustration or aggression <laughs> on our students. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. yeah but, 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 let me come in. Now, um, as we alluded at the beginning of this program, whatever model we have currently is not working. Yes. So, you know, you are looking at national um, you know, policy on education. You are looking at the, um, the institutional framework guideline on how um, education should be funded or run in Nigeria. You are looking at um, the interventions, the funding that comes from the tertiary education trust fund, which is 2.5% um, as amended by the Finance Act 2021, 2.5% of accessible profit, that these funds are used to support all public institutions, universities, Polytechnic colleges, they are shared in ratio 2 1 1. Now, in spite of all, of all this, we still have this problem. So, um, it is pointing to the fact that there is need for a new model. Sure. So, can we begin to look at what are some of the realistic, implementable, on paper, we have a lot of lovely things because we come up with ideas, you know, we are sprouting of knowledge and ideas, but we are looking at implementing what can be sustainably run. In fact, I've been to federal, federal schools and, and federal universities and recently, and when you come to a tertiary institution, when we schooled, you know, you see the brightness of the color, right? The neatness of it, it gives life. You know, you come alive. You want to remain there. You don't want to leave that school. But if you go there, you see dilapidated building, poorly painted, go to their conveniences, non-functional, messed up. So now, so let's leave what we've been doing. It has never worked, right? At least in the past, you know, um, as long as I remember, it has never worked, you know, from 1993 to date, whatsoever. Now, what are the components of the new models we may need to begin to explore? Thank you very much. Let me also say something. Development is deliberate and growth is strategic. Okay. Uh, okay. And uh, like I said something earlier. I said, I'm going to address it from the perspective of short, medium, and long term. Because the emphasis is proactive public funding. Proactive, yes. FI, and it needs to be a sustainable one. Correct. Otherwise, we sit in the morning and we get tired in the afternoon. Now, on the short term, which is talking about the current ASO strike, my advice in this regard, because you, no matter how much in a hurry you are, eh, you cannot shorten the pregnancy period by getting nine women pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> it is self well, okay. to a nine months thing. You okay, are in a hurry, okay, quite okay, all right. But then okay. you must wait for nine months in order for the child to arrive. Okay, you can't so bypass some you process. You can't bypass some process. So talking from the short term angle, I will advise that the government 
attend to ASU's need as a matter of priority? Because why I say as a matter of priority, are you talking security? Are you talking a lot of this? When these young boys don't have anything to do, or young boys and girls, they are, the devil finds a walk for the idle hand. They will be talking back Niger. They will do so many other things that you cannot vouch for. Not all of them will come from a closed door environment. And anything can happen when you find out they are not doing anything. You may think that it's all about learning a trade. Even those who are trading, how economically viable are they? So talking from the short term angle, I want the government, in my own opinion, it is advisable for the government to start addressing the a aspect of memorandum of action they have agreed with ASU. Short term, that is to deal with it. But then, when you address today's problem, have you addressed tomorrow's problem? That is where I'm going now. If the population projection we are having is that in 25 years' time, we'll be about 400 and something million. I'm always comfortable with figures. That's my first background. <laughs> but I'm also, while I'm comfortable with figures, I'm equally troubled by figures. Okay. Uh, the problem that comes my the point, Yes. If at 200 million, we're having this level of challenges, and we're in a growing population mode. Okay. The people who are looking for employment today, will they automatically find employment in 20 years' time? And age will be telling on them. We, are, we, are, we do not get married anymore in those days, like when we were young, when you see a typical uh, Southwestern man get married at the age of 27. Now we are gradually seeing the age factor <laughs> shifting towards the 40 category. With only 20 years useful life, if you are in public employment, and 15 years if you are in private, Okay, 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 okay. You have to go. go. I mean, it's not as if you want to go, but they ask you to go. So that is why. Now, be that as it may, now come back to the subject matter. From the medium perspective, okay. what do we need to do to ensure that in 20, 25 years' time, we are not going to have an actual conversation by the next generation? Wow, wow, wow. That would be bold. I'll say in the next 20, 25 years, strike as a terminology from ASU we cease to exist. That is the Can point. We achieve, okay. Because okay. if strike does not see, somebody, I mean, the president of us, I think, or somebody mentioned of this, that look, you see Nigerian lecturers everywhere in the world. You see Nigerian students, Nigerian city, citizens, everywhere in the world studying. So which means we are exporting a lot of this thing outside for them to be talking about either acquiring uh, education or dispensing knowledge. He now has a question. He said, how many foreigners are we seeing in Nigerian public universities? Okay, how many are we attracting? How many yeah. are we attracting okay. internally? So which is a question for policymakers to think about. Now, if you ask me, talking me I've mentioned the short term. Yeah, talking short -term medium medium. now. Talking medium is that we, we had an understanding, and it is documented, that we should stop this earmark taxes as a matter of policy, because we have ta um, so many taxes in Nigeria that, look, stop this issue of talking, this tax is a mark for this. But we already have the existing one. We have the third fund of this world. Now, what I found out, I'm not in the ac academia, but I think sooner or later, maybe we invite those who are there to give us detailed uh, uh, understanding of some of these things. But what we have found out is that, look, I've understood funding to a level that if you a market fund, it okay. is meant to address issues. And the best market fund is the endowment fund. Okay, okay, I like this. So we are now I'm speaking the best, of the way yes, We are going down to the level of media. The best market fund is the endowment fund. Now we had the third fund in place. If third fund, if all, I don't know the level of uh, compliance by companies and other this thing relating to payment and this issue of tax. This thing. But at the level at which they are today, third fund is still collecting the, uh, the tertiary education taxes. What amount do they collect? What proportion of this amount should now be put in this endowment to be managed, not by third fund, to be externally managed by an independent organization devoid of political maneuvering or even a change of governors or whatever? It should be institutionalized. This fund should go to this thing for purpose of investment, for purpose of generating returns okay. that will ultimately okay. 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 make 
a lot of sense. And let me give a simple arithmetic illustration. What will a trillion naira give, even at the level of 10% income? Interest, right? Yes, even at the level of just 10%. Uh, community. It will give about 100 billion. So if you are now looking at a situation where you grow this fund to a level where it is now accessible in terms of returns, and this return is now uh, further uh, adding to what the government is providing, sooner or later, over time, over time, 10 years, 15 years after, we get the type of investing we desire because they have this issue. I don't want it to be a question of investing by investing. We'll be having the FCC, ICPC following up on this. Let a separate institution be taking care of this. Okay, uh, my pleasure. Very much. Maybe what we have, you know, we have a pension fund manager, pension fund administrators, uh, you know, and we have all these assets and other, you know, wealth managers sure. who professionally grow fund exactly. and account to the investors what returns are periodically, monthly, uh, so maybe that there is something professionally done, right, and then they know they are accountable, you know, they run it professionally, not like um, a tech fund that will just do, they invest in treasury bill and all of that, you know, uh, so go ahead. Thank uh, so you for that it. intervention. I can tell you on good authority, I audited recently a foundation, and what they did was simple. They just decided to have a Stambic IBTC to manage two billion for them. Well, Stambic IBTC, I um, hope you are listening. You are going to pay us for this um, publicity because it's not paid, so it needs to be paid for. So, my friends, I can go ahead. So they, <laughs> and what we are having was more than ten percent. Now, let's even bring it down to ten percent of two billion. What does that give you? It gives you two hundred million. Do you understand? Yes. Now with yes. 200 million, this, foundation, yeah, 200 million. this yes. foundation is able to do a lot of regular, consistent, and sustainable intervention. Year in, year out. Yes. So, so that sustainability model that sustainability is was already built into it. And it's been handled by a professional investment arm. Which means the principal remain untouched. Okay. Okay, okay. And like one of my colleagues, I think in the course of conversation, said, what we have presently is collect and distribute, collect and spend. Okay, they charge and spend, charge yes, and spend. Charge there and is spend, no amplifying you. structure exactly. to grow the resource before begin to dish out, um, you know, the what accrues by way of um, interest or returns. And one of the things to further bring this home is why I'm saying is uh, there is a tax aspect in this issue of this program, certain taxation and you. Yes. And that is why I'm saying that all those things that have this issue of charges, and taxes, let a specific percentage of their money be deployed for purpose of endowment, which means we are thinking long term. If you deploy 10% of your resources for endowment, even as an individual, in 10 years' time, you have one uh, the, uh, an annual income already set aside. Do you understand that? Yes. Just be consistent and, and put aside 10% of your income, annual income. So in 10 years time, we are looking at something that is 100% of your income. Okay, that, that would mean our government has to be um, fiscally disciplined. Them to that ensure is, in fact, that is, that, is, that is inevitable. Lack of fiscal discipline technically means you are eating into the future of your children. <laughs> that is the truth. This is harsh. Because let me, let, me, let, me, <laughs> let, me, right. let me be more simplistic. And in more being more simplistic, you see a farmer, people will, will claim did not go to school and the rest. They are already knowledgeable enough that it is not everything they take from their farm that they must consume. Okay. I mean, some of these lessons, we need to learn it. We need to go to the heart in order to learn some of the things that make sense. If a farmer who is meant to be, oh, the people who are doing the rudiment of these things, they realize in the, this thing that you do not eat everything. You put aside some in order for you to put into the ground so that what comes out from the ground is in order to feed you and your family again. Okay. And then in our own case, we are not only just consuming everything, we are even incurring debt. <laughs>
Well, uh, that's, uh, so if we are not deliberate that's about that's this fund okay. and making it clear that there is a need to modify the fund, that the percentage should be set aside for endowment so that we do not have issue of third fund intervening in 2022, intervening in 2025, inter at a point third fund will be crying that they don't have resources to do the intervention. Okay, Mr. this is interesting. In the short term, the federal government will have to come out for to settle the existing obligation. And close it out. Right? Realistically. Realistically. Uh, they may need to look at, okay, also, okay, can we now begin to, are there things we can cut down on? You know, is there transparent about it? Is it um, to ensure that um, the demands are not bloated, they are real, they are factual? But you mentioned the point, they need to be paid, they need to be settled. Yeah. Right? Then in the medium term, let's work towards an endowment fund model where resources, um, we already have third fund, will, um, or whichever other taxes we may have, Let's have a pool that can grow the resources so that from there, the government, right, through this, um, you know, handing over this fund to a professional asset managers can generate it on that will sustainably provide funding for the operations of tertiary institution. So yeah. um, we've dealt with, um, you know, medium term, you know, uh, uh, short term. Now, my president, uh, before you move on, um, you see, the discovery we have in Nigeria is that our research projects from our undergraduates, postgraduates, most of the time they end up in just getting CGPs, right? You want to score a 70%, a 68%, and it ends there. Even for ideas that can be commercialized, they end up in shelves, in our various libraries, or in our, in our e libraries and all that. Now, um, can a public private partnership work? Towards, okay, for an investor that produces certain number of graduates at the first degree level, or for a polytechnic that produces certain number of graduates at the HND level, they are researching. The research are supposed to be discoveries, advancement on thoughts, expansion of ideas. Can we not begin to look at something very workable where we get, we create a nexus between this tertiary, you know, university means. Universal, you know, you know, universality, um, you know, you know, call it, um, um, uh, what was that, uh, Latin, um, that Latin universality. You know, yes, you know, that, um, that, um, that totality, universality of education, meaning every single thought process, every single thing, a thinking world exists only in the university. That is the mindset. So now, coming from this thinking perspective, can we now say this project, these graduates, can now be a nexus? with private sector, entrepreneurs, investors, industrialists, who may want to commercialize, you know, research finding or output of graduates. So in that model, you know, we have investors who commercialize this idea. There is a PPP, there is an agreement. The return that are made, of course, not all idea will thrive, right? The investors will kind of sieve, sieve all of this uh, research output, put some to work, so that the return that are made from these ventures cannot contribute additionally to the pool hmm. of the endowment fund we are looking at. What would be your take on that? Let me say uh, everything you said is what I agree with. And I will also further uh, uh, add flesh to it this way. Even at the level of where we were at the strategy, policy and strategic studies, I took my time in the course of going to the library because I was trying to talk about um, uh, my project was on tax-related issues. So okay. I took my time, <laughs> okay. and I realized that as far back as 1980-something, somebody wrote a research project that was based on value-added tax. Okay. I'm trying to give a, a background to just attend to that issue you mentioned. And that was 80-something. This okay. thing came into existence virtually in 93. 93, okay, now years that before it. Ye I mean, years before it. And I realized that when I look at this, I asked myself some questions. The quality of thought at that level, because I took my time to go through it, the quality of thought that was in place in talking about this research were things that other countries were coming in and getting the benefit of it. That is number one. To the extent that, as of today, the Chinese government is taking more than casual interest in the entity called Nigeria. Now, at the level of National Serial and Research Institute, some years back, okay. I was there as an auditor. 
And I realized that the debt, let's give it to ourselves. An average Nigerian is a very intelligent person. I can tell you, I can give that to you anytime, any day. And I realized that the quality of the work they are doing, the fourth foundation of this world, and so many other ones, the Rockefellers are the rest, these yeah. are the people getting the benefit of their intellectual output. Okay. Nigeria has not been able to harness it out. Now you come back again to the level of the connection, the nexus between university uh, 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 research project and what we are gradually having, including our entrepreneurship and the rest. We give illustration most of the time that has to do with how Dubai was turned into a miracle. <laughs> and these are things that baffles me. Yeah, the desert that became exactly yeah, like, <laughs> a desert that became a miracle. I would say that if if that can be done, and we are talking about borrowed brilliance. Wow, that can wow. be I like done. That borrowed brilliance. Yes, wow, that, that can be class. done in that place. What okay. will it take our people here to go and study how they did it and come back and replicate the same? These are things we should start addressing. And if you are not talking about long term, still on the public funding uh, model, long term, and we see a situation, you have too much of land, you don't even know what to do with it. Why don't you get a dangote, have a conversation with him, have a memorandum of understanding. Please, we want you to locate this factory. Land is not something that comes cheap. We want you to locate something on the basis of the land we are going to provide. Whatever comes out of this, a percentage of it should be given to help us fund our university system. Rather than asking your uh, student to be taking O's and uh, uh, machete or whatever, to be doing that, looking as if we are giving them corporal punishment in the era of fourth industrial revolution. So why don't you do that with even the knowledge, if the man goes, what it takes to be an entrepreneur would have gone with him. And this is something you can institutionalize. Okay. The whole okay. essence of the university system is to move people from being knowledge-based individual to make a place a knowledge-based organization. Okay. Something systematic. Something systematic. Okay. So that at the end of the day, what do you now want to do? You leave the land fatter, then you are busy looking for how to kill reptiles, how to kill snakes. <laughs> <laughs> when that place could be giving you economic income, these are crit critical issues. University should start thinking out of the box. Because no matter how insulated you are within the university environment, you are going to come out into the real world. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Whether now or later. Make okay. the retirement age 75. Make it whatever this is. You are still going to come out into the real world. An inability to address it while you are even there will make you to be looking like somebody who is lost. Yeah, but thank you so much. I think um, we've spoken about the endowment fund that should be professionally managed yeah. as a medium term into long term solution for sustainability of funding of these social institutions. We've spoken about the medium term solution, which is government should have to pay us. They need to, um, through some way, come up with resources to pay. It may need to be renegotiated, but when there is a commitment that's going to be a 100% payment, that will solve the current um, debacle that we are in. Then we've spoken about um, the nexus, the nexus between the university and all that. We are going to get our viewers and our listeners around Nigeria and the world to type in their questions. Um, we are going to um, try to read as as much as we can at 11.40. It's already 11.38 now. Um, we are keeping strictly to our time. We are going to say how we can entertain questions. But Mr. President, have this in mind. Um, um, you know, think over it. If you go to a typical um, public university or polytechnic, after the newness of the establishment, things begin to dilapidate. The frames are fading. The conveniences are non-functional. Refuge disposal system in total mess. The hostels are unkept very, um, you know, below the dignity of what an undergraduate should be, um, you know, uh, you are not in a, you know, you are not in, a, you know, even in prisons in other parts of the world, they are well kept, right? So, um, there is this huge infrastructural maintenance deficit in our personal culture, right? You know, the argument is that there is no money, you know, that the common, everybody says that, that is the easiest thing to say. So, think about this, is it possible for us to begin to think about a model where a private enterprise or private enterprises can be in charge of trying to manage professionally the infrastructural assets 
or public school. Because a lot of academics do their work. You know, you go to a director of works, you know, in these schools, you are looking at the tanker. The tanker is looking gone. Looking. You are looking at the furniture. You look at the, the go to the computer laboratory. A whole lot of things are gone. The furniture broken down and all of that. So we are saying, can we outsource professionally in line with the fund generation and management model, infrastructure management, let it be professionally managed, of course at a fee, but there's going to be that optimality of management to ensure that we have functional um, educational assets and infrastructure that support the teaching and learning. Think about this while we go, it's 11.40 now, um, we want to look at um, some of the questions that we have um, and see how we can respond to them within the next um, 15 minutes. So um, can we just um, pop up the question? Should Let's see. That while we are uh, think over it, uh, you know, so that we can get our audience in. Um, okay, we have commendations here from um, ICCC um, then the uh, Wasila Tabi Salam. Um, we need questions, we need contributions. Um, thank you for the good comments. Yes, yes, okay, hold it there. Um, uh, okay, so we are going to appreciate when um, we speak to issues, right? This is not a political program, and we are not here to glamorize um, anything, right? We don't want to deal with issues with the purpose of trying to come in up with a workable document. And like we said, CITN is ready for the Federal Minister of Education. We are ready for the Federal Minister of Finance. We are ready with, um, you know, Tet Fund itself. We are ready for us um, to, to make CITN to come up with a revenue model, a revenue sustainability model, right? Uh, you know, and um, you know, and an um, asset management model that can work. So this is not just a talk show. Please let's keep let's keep and politics out of our um, contributions, and um, let's see how we can you know deal with the meat of the matter. Uh, we are having commendation. Um, Okay, okay. Someone is complaining that Nigeria, the UK, yes. UK yesterday um, licensed 266 Nigerian nurses in two months. That is the brain drain, right? We come up, you know, we have the, we have the you know, our midwives, our nurses. We train them. They go through the harshness of the process. They become brief for life, only for us to lose them <laughs> to UK, to Qatar, to Oman to Saudi Arabia, you know, mention them, you know, in, in Canada, the new bride, Canada, massive exodus of Nigeria, and that is sad. Um, okay, uh, colleagues and uh, members of the public, we're going to appreciate if we can um, get, um, let's play down the politicking, let's deal with the issue. The problem is that the funding model we have is not working. So what are the proactive way forward? So please, um, let's play down the political rhetorics. I'm trying to deal with the fiscal question. Contributions will be much appreciated. Um, and can, yes, I'm going to, okay, um, okay, okay, let's move on. Um, okay, someone's talking about critical success. Can you scroll, let's do that question. Uh, yes. Okay, yeah, some, uh, yeah, Dr. Gossiniro, he say, don't you consider a maintenance culture as a critical success factor to resolving university challenges. You may want to yeah. say it or two on yeah. that before we just, go back. Let me just say, in fact, that question is also directly tied to the one you asked earlier about the issue of our maintenance culture. And uh, before I address this, I want to just say two things. I want to use the street mentality to answer <laughs> this. Okay. Uh, you see a petty trader, somebody that is selling vegetable, and he has a good knowledge of economics 101. There is a portion of the money, even doing this month, uh, regular daily susu. Okay, the, okay. There is a percentage of the money the person is using to re uh, replenish working capital. A percentage is used for purpose of feeding. A percentage is put aside to meet some other needs like pay rent. And then if the person is now the type of this, maybe another percentage to pay tight and other things or to attend to other family issues. That is one. Now, I will give you the issue of somebody who is a, a driving vehicle on the road, public vehicle. One of the first things they train them on is the fact that, look, 
if you collect a 10,000 naira today, and you think you are going to spend the 10,000 naira on yourself, by the time the vehicle has a challenge, you will not have money to take to maintain that vehicle. You will not be begging people that you want to maintain your vehicle. So a percentage, a 30-30-30 model is even used for purpose of saying, look, keep, be keeping 10% every day on those daily money you make. And while doing this, I want to connect it again to most of the time when we go to Ghana, our neighboring country. We normally use this place called West African College of Physicians and Surgeons. Okay, 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 okay. We've been using that place for more than close to 10 years. And every time we come, annually, August, you see the place looking very new. Regular maintenance, regular painting, regular everything. Always coming alive. Always coming alive. Every year. The only time we did not go do that was during the COVID period. And then you ask yourself, is a public institution. Okay. How come it is this well kept? Okay. They even have a guest house. And the guest house is always functional. It is not this thing. You, you ask yourself, how do they, do they do it? Now, back to the question you are talking about, and which Dr. Gossiniro mentioned there, is about what level of maintenance culture should we be adopting? Okay. And do we do, manage it in-house, or we talk about, uh, beyond, I don't want to talk about the corruption factor. Okay. But just saying that, look, this maintenance, we are looking at a situation where this is the maintenance we require in, every year. Okay. And it is as a routine, as a routine, as a deliberate action. I said something at the beginning. I said development is deliberate yes, and growth is strategic. Where's, once you have developed at the back of your mind, you don't wake up all of a sudden and then you look as if this thing was bought. You see it in almost all uh, public uh, this thing. You see a vehicle that is bought new. Even when it comes to the uh, security this thing, you see the thing at the <laughs> level of launching. The thing is looking so new. Some years after, then you are trying to reconcile. No, a year after, not some years. Okay. You know? So, so when you give our police all first, these are challenges. You know, don't let them again. Uh, three weeks after. So that means that maintenance was not built, like he rightly said, like Dr. Uh, Gossi said, maintenance is not built into the culture. You buy something new and you did not factor in maintenance. If you even have to take it to the level of marriage, you marry a wife as a chassis, you must maintain her. <laughs> well, that's kind of a was <laughs> correct. Anyway. Uh, so let's take out some of that question. Someone says, um, how can we involve, that's from Adetun Adeo show. So how can we involve the political class in the understanding of the insurance, um, um, that has good, in understanding and ensuring um, that um, and as I'm ensuring the system of continuous funding of the educational system from the annual budget itself, the problem persists. I think we've already dealt with that, right? Because uh, we have something recurring. There's an annual budgetary, uh, whether it's below 25%, below 20%, or if you accumulate it, it's above 20%, all of those um, arguments. The, for the reality is that it's not working. Yes. Um, Ability value, Mr. President, says the funding model may require that everyone, including the student, pay more. <laughs> Okay, that will not be sounding well to parents and students. And our schools are run professionally, notwithstanding that they are public schools. Do you think most of the lecturers and administrators in our schools are ready for this, or how can they be held accountable? Um, yes. And the direction is um, whether you're know, trying to get more people to come to the courts, right? Yes. There, is a, there is a radical thought that just went through my mind. And I think it's, I started that by talking about when we have 133 million people having bank accounts. Who says, the, at least we are aware that the banking sector is one of those uh, few, distinct, few institutions that are still profitable. All okay. the manufacturing sectors are challenged as are today. And if you have that, and you are talking, because one of the things I read in the course of coming here and I listened to was that at the initial stage, what ASU recommended is to deploy part of what we collect as stamp duties and VAT towards funding public education. Okay. You will see the fact that tax is never being ignored because they know. But then the question now is this. When you have this, what our, just like you said at the beginning, our existing model is not working. 
So we need to start putting them in, setting our priorities right. And if we do not set our priorities right as a country, and our population is growing by the day, is either we're adding to the ignorance or we're adding to the poverty. Okay, factually, we're correct, yeah. So as much as possible, what, I, what radical thought came to my mind now was, look, if you talk about, I said it at the beginning, a 2,000 per uh, bank holder, per anybody having bank account, per annum, you have about 266 billion. If what are the 3 million people have bank accounts, and you say 2,000, just one 2,000, 2,000 one off, you have 266 billion. Now, if that is not the case, and this is added to this endowment for long-term sustainability model, I'm not talking about giving it to the government, I'm talking about whatever. You see that these are all issues we need to be mindful of. Okay. Thank you, Mr. President. Yeah, I, I, let's get some questions. Some people, their hands are up. I want to come from Mr. Uh, Mr. Sorry, if I, did not, if I did not call your appellation correctly, you bear with me. Uh, we are calling with the name we have on screen. Uh, Mr. Damu Ibrahim, can you please um, unmute and uh, make your contributions or ask your questions? Mr. Damu Ibrahim, thank you. Hello. Uh, good morning. Good morning, sir. I can hear you loud and clear, sir. Go ahead. Okay. My name is uh, Ambassador Adamu Ibrahim, uh, FCTI, uh, membership number 9250. I uh, just want to give a contribution regarding education. And I have had an experience leading a delegation uh, to understand some public universities in the U.S. and the way they are run, uh, which held my state when a university was set up. And uh, one of the things I found out is, apart from the initial grant, the government gives to these universities, these universities become independently commercial, um, they are self-funding. What the state does is come up with policies like scholarships, uh, loan schemes, and then the private sector also coming in with various uh, awards, scholarships, and uh, towards excellence and what have you. And that makes the universities very competitive. And I think in the long run, we have to do this. To be frank and sincere, government alone cannot fund university education, tertiary education. Let us tell ourselves the truth. Government can come up with policies that will help citizens, the less to do, uh, come up with scholarships, loan schemes, and the rest of policies. And then the private sector also to come in um, to help with these things. Uh, I believe once these are done, these universities will be independent. They can pay themselves adequately well. They can fund their infrastructure with the support of institutions like Ted Fund and the rest, other interventions in the infrastructure side. Uh, I think the universities can become competitive and therefore compete with all class universities in the whole world. But to stay and say, we've taken your yeah. point. Some people are uh, noted. We want to take one or two because of uh, we are tight okay. on time. Ambassador, thank you so much for your insights. And then um, we recognize you're a member of the Institute. Um, so we may need to reach out to you in addition to flesh us on this contribution. Yeah. Um, thank you so much, um, Ambassador. Let's go to, um, is um, out there? Okay, is out, uh, okay, is out there. Okay, let's go to Dr. Omarolen. Dr. Omarolen, you have um, two minutes. Dr. Omarolen, two minutes to make your contribution or um, ask your questions. Thank you. Two minutes, please. You may unmute and talk to us. Okay, okay, yeah, it's on. Please, two minutes, please. Okay, thank you very much, uh, President and the host. Uh, the President said, um, President, we'll be missing you when you exit uh, the system. You are wonderful. I think uh, what uh, the last person, the speaker, said is Janet to our education private uh, participation. 
when I was in the university, University of Benin, I introduced this uh, one two room picking one toilet. People just threw short put. You know, in the course of your to uh, discussion, you said uh, giving some of these things to the private. Private is not also very. You go to the university, they give contract to the private. They pay the women 5000 instead of twenty, and those women never work. When I went back to State University, that are State University, I went to like five of them, couple of them in this country. I also implemented a policy of three, four persons, locking one room. Boy, that is Dr. four Omar, rooms. Omar, Omar, can you quickly round up? Because I thought on time. Sorry. Um, to, so many, please. Can you round up, please? To, to call it, it the, you rightly said uh, an issue. I think I have recommended that the federal government should seek knowledge from the institute. That alternative way of running the university, that policy you people will provide, may go a long way to salvage that university. Go to the private. Okay, uh, Dr. Dr. Bono, I think your, your points are noted. You made your point. Thank you so much, sir. Um, please bear with us if, we, if it happens that we've caught you in. We will be there with a lot of things. Thank you so much. You. It's a very wonderful program. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Dr. Felix. Um, we are going to take, please, strictly, your contribution in 45 seconds. Ashir Adam, after Ashir Adam, Sadiq Akbayami, please, 45 seconds quickly, because um, we are running out of time. Thank you. Ashir Adam, please. Okay. Uh, good afternoon. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, my president. Good morning. Uh, my contribution here is that actually you have said all, but my own is that we students let us contribute a token amount so that we can get back to our classes while negotiation with the government is on progress. And also, I have seen recently the government of Rwanda just review the salary structure of teachers in Rwanda as a country. So, comparatively speaking, Nigeria to the welfare and the well-being of our lecturers and teachers entirely wounded well. So men need to look into it and do the needful. And also, so please, many... Please, 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 Natasha Adam, I gave you for five seconds. Um, you've gone in two minutes. So many points have been read that government alone cannot power a uh, public university. Like my... Dr. Uh, Adam, I'm going to let you go. Um, I think we've taken your point. The proposal for sacrificial contribution by students to get back in class and um, also um, many of the public trying to come in. Thank you so much. Um, lastly, Sadiq Akbar, me, please, strictly, strictly, 45 seconds. Sadiq Akbar, me, are you right. there? Yes, sir. Yes, I can hear you. Uh, yes, I can hear you. Go ahead, please. All right, all right. Uh, good morning, Mr. President. Uh, thanks for this. Um, basically, sir, my concern is just uh, the, 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 the content government. People are misquoting that. Oh, sorry, we have lost Sadiq Akbar me there. We've lost him. Uh, I, okay. I, hello, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, hear please, you. quickly, please. Oh, okay, okay. Please, uh, my, my main concern, Mr. President, is, is the word federal government. What constitutes the word federal government? Just like this particular quote, the poor are, the poor are unrest. And when the poor are on rest, that let me see when they are hungry, they cannot sleep. And when the poor cannot sleep, the rich too. Uh, cannot sleep they, are, they, they are aware of the poor that are not on rest. So basically, is that the federal government constitutes not only the Buhari himself, not only the federal minister of education itself. Let everybody come. I'm um, sorry, we're having a poor quality. We need to let you go, please. We need, sorry, sorry, Mr. Sorry, your points are noted. Um, yes. It's time. I want to tell Mr. President, um, we need to continue this um, you know, uh, conversation. Uh, it's almost 12, we need to go. I want to, in a special way, thank you for coming, taking out your very schedule. Um, you have a very crazy schedule, that we know. Thank you for coming thank to grow the maiden edition of this program. Thank you. We intend to get you back here and also get other stakeholders to continue this intervention through discussion and trying to look for a policy way out. Um, we thank all our members there of CIT and all across Nigeria and around the world who joined us on this program. Thank you for being there. Um, for for call for inquiries and the rest of them, we can get across to CITN 
on 090-8088815. Once again, 090-8088815. That is um, 80 to 4 places, 15. So get in touch with us for inquiry. I will also implore you, please, your commentaries, your observation, and, um, you know, um, in the criticism, please send them in on how we can advance this program in the future as we go ahead. I thank our, our, our camera guys at the back. We have a whole lot of team at the back. You can't see them. There's so much. Without them, you can't see us live. You can't get to enjoy the program you're enjoying. Thank you, guys. You know, thank you guys for being there. So thank you all. We pray for a better Nigeria and we have to walk. We are making this stuff. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.